Welcome back to the lab, it's been a while since the last video, the main reason is that I didn't have much time to spend here in the lab, and also some of the experiments that I did during the last year didn't really work that well. However, the lab is still going, and today we are going to do a bit of electronics, because one of the tools that I have here in the lab broke, in particular this UV neon lamp that I use for making printed circuit boards. This is what we are dealing with today, it is a modified insect zapper that I actually use to expose PCBs to UV light, and it has a control circuit up here. Actually, all of the parts that have been removed are for the insect zapper part, while what remains are the electronic ballast for the neon tubes. The symptoms are that it was working, and then all of a sudden it made a pop and the light turned off. The first thing that I suspected were the two transistors. I checked them, and they are actually in complete short circuit. I tried changing them, but it still does not work. I tried measuring voltage at the two capacitors, and there was actually more than 300 volts, so voltage arrives at the circuit, but the oscillator probably doesn't start in some way, even though the transistors check good. In order to understand what's going on, I reverse engineered the circuit, and it turns out it's a standard compact fluorescent driver circuit. The way it works, it's basically a high frequency oscillator that uses a tree winding transformer to drive these two transistors in push pull and generate a high frequency waveform at this point of the circuit that drives the two neon tubes. This capacitor is actually for generating a small current to turn on the filaments. Let's see what could go wrong apart from the transistors. Let's start measuring resistor values. We start with the low values and then work our way up to the higher values. This nominally 10 ohm resistor measures around 13, 14 ohms. Okay, that's fine. Probably some contact issues. And this 2.2 ohms resistor is actually open. We have our first problem. Let's check also the other resistors. Also, this 2.2 ohms resistor is open. This 10 ohms resistor is open as well. Now let's change the range to measure the high value resistors. This 680 kilo ohm is 700 or something and increasing, but that seems good. It's not open. And this other 680 kilo ohm resistor. Checks good. It turns out that both the resistor at the emitter of the transistors are open, and also this resistor at the base of the upper transistor is open. If you look closely at this part of the circuit, however, these two resistors are touching together. Probably they were mounted like this when they were soldered, but these two resistors are one of this and one of this. One of the points that are touching goes to the base, and the other one goes to the collector. So I think that uh, with time and humidity, the insulation broke down and they created a short or an arc between those two points of the circuit, which then blew this transistor, these two resistors, this bottom transistor, and also this resistor. I think we can try to desolder these resistors and replace them with new ones to see if the problem is solved. Of course, we are going to solder them well spaced apart. I have changed the resistors. Now it is time to see whether the circuit works or not. Testing in 3, 2, 1. And it works again. Yes. One of the tubes is a little bit weak, so it takes a while to turn on. But I guess it's fixed.